You do one bad thing and then another bad thing. You start missing church and all these other things. It's easy to just snowball sin. But encouragement, when especially in view of eternity and Christ coming back, it's that one thing that says, you know what, sometimes you have fallen. You can get back up because the blood of Christ will wash away your sins if you confess. Or Christ is coming, don't worry about it. I know things are hard, but it's that protection. So encouragement has a practical application in trying to help protect each other. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I encourage you, because I want each of you to stand in eternity with me before Christ, knowing that we're all saved and we're protecting one another by encouraging one another, reminding us about Christ, reminding about his return, reminding about his love and his grace. And so that encouragement helps protect one another. That's why we strengthen and encourage one another. Have you noticed that people who often leave the church are usually discouraged? The people feel discouraged. Now, a lot of times it's because of sin. We know that from Jesus' parable of the sower. But a lot of people who are, leave the church are either discouraged or angry or hurt, and they feel like no one cares. And sometimes people will miss and worship for six months, and then no one will ever see or talk to them. And they'll say, see, that just justifies my point. And that's not how we want anyone to feel. That's why we want to encourage. That's why we want to spend time together. Why we want to encourage one another. Why the worship service should not be the only time where we're actually together. Because it's hard to encourage only on Sunday mornings. And so one of the things that I want us to really think about is, are we encouraging? Are you encouraging one another? And in a little bit, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss how to be encouraged. But I want you to really evaluate yourself. I want to ask you this question. And it, it's really hard and transparent one. And it really tests hearts and your faith. But I want to ask you a question. When you're among your Christian brothers and sisters... Do they feel encouraged in your presence? Or do they feel more discouraged in your presence? Because if they feel more excited and they want to be around you and they're excited to be around you and they try to flock to you and they try to find you out when, they, when it's time where the church assembles together, then it probably means you're doing something right in encouragement. Because people flock to encouragers. They want to be around people who will make them feel good and build up their faith. But are you a discourager where people avoid you? Where people feel like you're criticizing them and judging them. Where they just feel, I don't want to be around that person because all they do is drag me down. Because if you're feeling like that, then you're not being a biblical encourager. We need to be encouraging one another. We need to be looking at our faith and saying, am I willing to be selfless enough to think about the needs of my brothers and sisters in Christ where I'm saying nice things to them and encouraging things to them according to their needs rather than my own needs. You see, I want to grow as an encourager because one of the things I understand is if I encourage 10 people, now, I, I can do a lot as a Christian by myself, you okay? I, I, I work really diligently. But one of the things I know is if I can encourage and build up 10 other Christians in the church and then 20 other Christians in the church, guess what I'm doing? Instead of just me doing all the work, I'm helping you fulfill your purpose and your giftedness and you're glorifying God and more things are being done for God and more people are being touched and reached. You see, I can do more by encouraging people than just doing all the work by myself and thinking I'm right with God. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that what we want to do? And so when we think about this, I want to ask, are we really going to change or do we want to be encouragers? Because if ultimately God's glory is our purpose, then we understand if we encourage people, they'll bring up more glory to God. If we're willing to encourage one another, we'll strengthen each other and we'll help remain faithful. And all those different things, God is glorified. And so I think about this. How are we going to be an encouraging church? How are we going to be an encouraging people? How are we going to build each other up where we're excited to be around each other? Where worship service and ministries and fellowships and all the other things that we do, nothing seems to be a bore or an obligation, but it's something that you say, I look forward to being with my church family. I look forward to serving with my church family. How can we be like that? Well, I, 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 look at, I always look to men who can mentor me and grow. And one of the men that I mentor, and, and I do a lot of mentoring through books, is by a man by the name of Joseph. You may know him by the name Barnabas, as the apostles named him. A man by the name of Joseph 
was so effective and so well known for his encouragement that the apostles of Jesus Christ gave him the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And from this man, I learned some aspects of, of encouragement. The first, so I want us to look at three things that Barnabas shows me about being an encourager. Obviously, there's a lot more, but because of time and so forth, I just want to list three basic things that you need in order to be an encourager. The first thing that I want us to look at is, to encourage, you need godly character. In Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37, we see the character of, of Barnabas. It says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, from whom the apostle called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. This man was a man who was of sacrifice, a man of character. He was so well known by the apostles and had the respect of the apostles, he was given a special name. That's not his character. But not only that, he sacrificed his soul what he had in order to give it to the church so that God can be glorified. And this is mentioned right before Ananias and Sapphira is mentioned. The complete contrast of, of this man of character, Ananias and Sapphira are ones who lie to the Holy Spirit, lie about their sacrifice, lie about their giving, and then they get struck dead by uh, Peter's words. But right before that, in order to show us the contrast of the bad, they con the Holy Spirit showed us through his word that a contrast of good character by mentioning Barnabas. You see, as you read through the book of Acts, Barnabas is a man of high character. And one of the things I learned is, in order to be in character, you really gotta have godly character. Because if you don't have godly character, guess what, you're gonna be selfish. Selfish people do not encourage people because they're too busy thinking about their own needs. Remember what we read in Ephesians chapter four? And we encourage people by our speech according to their needs. Until you have the godly maturity and character in your life that says, I'm willing to suppress my own wants and needs, I'm gonna think about the needs of other people and encourage them in accordance with that, then you're not going to encourage anybody because you're too self-focused. You'll think more of, I wish other people would meet my needs more than asking, how can I meet their needs? That, that, that shows a huge level of Christian maturity. That shows a great deal of godly character, where it says, I'm willing to think about other people before myself. And until you can build that character of selflessness, you're not going to encourage people effectively. Because people will think of you as one who's just trying to be encouraged, rather to encourage. Some people always complain in churches saying, well, no one encourages me. But my question is, well, who have you encouraged? Because you know what? The more people you encourage, the more likely they're gonna encourage you back. And so if you lack encouragement from other people, maybe you have to start asking, am I encouraging other people? Because encouragers encourage one another. And that's exactly what the scriptures show us to do. We're to encourage each other each time we assemble. And so one of the things that we need to do is we need to encourage one another and treat each other like Christ, not like the world. The world already judges us, criticizes us, hates us. We don't need that in the church. We need to encourage one another. A second thing that we need is to encourage, you need courage. Now, how can you instill courage in other people if you yourself don't have courage? One of the things that I have spent time meditating was, I asked myself, who are the greatest encouragers that you know throughout your personal life in regards to the church? And as I was thinking about that, I thought about the different encouragers that I've known, and the ones who I thought were the best and greatest encouragers were those who had a great sense of confidence. Not arrogance, but confidence. They were confident in the fact that God is, is supreme. Confident in the fact that God's grace and love is upon them. They're confident in their own salvation. Confident in the abilities and giftedness of other people. Confident and what they're doing for the Lord. They just had this healthy self-esteem in Christ because it's rooted in Christ. And because that, their faith allowed them to do amazing things in courage because they realized with Christ, I can do all things. And that's one of the amazing things. But oftentimes people are so timid and, and scared that if someone who was a scaredy cat came up and told you to do something bold, you'd be like, um, yeah, you, after you, buddy. But one of the things is, when someone who is courageous, someone who is confident, someone who is humble yet strong comes up and he starts encouraging you, or she comes and strengthens you, that changes things. 
and it helps you to realize